We want to be able to write the rate law for any reaction. We're going to talk about that next. The enduring understanding is still that some reactions happen quickly while others happen more slowly and depend on concentrations and temperatures. Our learning objective is to represent experimental data with a consistent rate law expression. Three pieces of essential knowledge will help us do that. One, the rate law expresses the rate of a reaction as proportional to the concentrations of each reactant raised to a power. Two, the power of each reactant in the rate law is the order of the reaction with respect to that reactant. And the sum of these powers is the overall order of the reaction. Three, the proportionality constant in the rate law is called the rate constant. The value of this constant is temperature dependent and the units reflect the overall order of the reaction. So what is a rate law? It is a mathematical expression that describes the relationship between the initial concentrations of the reactants and the overall reaction rate. So in other words, we're looking at how this rate is going to be affected by changing the concentration of each reactant. Each reactant could affect the reaction rate differently. So these orders or these little powers, these exponents, give us an indication of how the concentration of that particular reactant affects the overall reaction rate. There are several pieces to this rate law expression, so let's look at each one. First of all, notice that this expression is going to be set equal to the rate. This is the rate of reaction. It's equal to some constant. This is the rate constant. The rate constant is specific for that reaction at that temperature. So the rate constant is temperature dependent, but it's also reaction dependent. Then we've got these concentrations. That's the concentration of each reactant. If there are more reactants, you'd have more things listed. If there are fewer reactants, you'd have fewer things listed. And each of those reactants is raised to a power. We call these orders and they tell us how that specific reactant's concentration is going to affect the reaction rate overall. It's important to know this. When we are writing these rate laws, we cannot use the stoichiometry of the overall reaction. We can use stoichiometry when we're talking about relative rates, when we're comparing the, the rate of consumption or production of the various pieces of the reaction. But when we are writing the rate law, we cannot use the stoichiometry at all. These are unrelated things. So let's talk about the orders. What do the orders tell us? If we have a first order, that means that we're saying the rate is equal to some constant times the concentration raised to the power of one. That would be first order. That means that whatever happens to the concentration also happens to the reaction rate. In other words, if we double the concentration, then we double the reaction rate. If we triple the concentration, we triple the reaction rate, and so on and so forth. If it's a second order reaction, that means we're saying that the rate is equal to some constant times the concentration of the reactant raised to the power of two. So whatever happens to the concentration gets squared for the rate. So in other words, if we double the concentration, then the rate we're going to multiply by two squared or by four. If we tripled the concentration, then that means that the rate we would need to multiply it by three squared or nine. If we quadrupled the concentration, then we would need to take the rate and multiply by four squared or 16. There is also a zero order. That means that we're saying that the rate is equal to some constant times the concentration raised to the power of zero. Remember that anything raised to the power of zero is one. So it really doesn't matter what we do to the concentration. If we raise it to the power of zero, it doesn't affect the rate because it's still one. So changing the concentration of this reactant does not affect the rate at all. Fractional orders are possible. We don't see them a ton, but we do see them. So that would be something like a rate is equal to K times the concentration of something raised to the one half or raised to the three-fourth. 
Remember that when you raise something to a fraction, it's the same as taking the square root. So that would be the same as saying k times the square root of the concentration of D. Or here, it would be the same as saying k times the fourth root of the concentration of D cubed. The denominator of these fractions tells us the root and the numerator would tell us if we were raising it to a power. Sometimes we want to talk about the overall order of the reaction. This is equal to the sum of all orders. In other words, in this example, the overall order would be zero plus two plus one equals three. So this would be a third order reaction overall. So the rate constant is the K in the rate law expression. So we've been writing rate equals K times reactant something raised to an order times the concentration of another reactant raised to another order. This K is the rate constant. Notice that this K is always lowercase. There is a capital case K that we use in other applications, so it's important that this one stays lowercase. There are several things we need to know about this rate constant. One is that these are unique to each reaction, so we have to determine these experimentally. We have to collect data, graph them, and see what that constant ends up being. They are also temperature dependent, which means if we change the temperature, we need to calculate or find a new K. There are units on K, and that unit reflects the overall order. There is a pattern to this, and so if you memorize this um, little equation, you can always find your units. You take time to the negative one, and your molarity to the one minus the overall order for the reaction. You could also write that like this, molarity to the one minus the overall over time. So for example, if we have an overall order of two, then the units on K should be molarity to the one minus two over whatever our time unit is. So that might be days, seconds, minutes. Be careful because those units are not always the same. Or in other words, one minus one is negative one. So molarity to the negative one over T or one over molarity times T, whatever that T unit is. If we had an overall order of three, molarity to the one minus three over time, whatever that time unit is. So molarity to the negative two over T, or we could write that as one over molarity squared times T. What if our overall order were one? Then we would get molarity to the one minus one over T. One minus one is zero, so that would just be one over whatever that time unit is. This is super important, and it's going to be important that you memorize this. I don't ask you to memorize a ton. Most of it stays on that equation sheet, but this is something that you really need to memorize.